Good evening, GT Classic Channel. Holy smokes, do we have an exciting one for you tonight? You will not believe what we have in store for you tonight here at twitch.tv slash gt classic we have bottom bracket double elimination this is the double part in a double elimination tournament gt classic category between sloters 27 and sephanomi the winner of this match will progress to the bottom bracket finals to face the one and only professor school to earn a spot in the grand finals of the entire GT classic tournament, 2022, 2022 edition. My name is the hockey towner and it gives me great pleasure to be coming to you live here on Twitch with tonight's race. Our racers are nearly ready. I do believe that, uh, Sephanomi just has to sit through the intro, get a clean save ready on his game. And oh, I'm just so tickled to see everybody here in chat coming out to support some of their favorite Super Metroid runners. Both of these runners have, in, I mean, they need no introduction, but they will get an introduction. Sloters 27, amazing runner, holding, I believe, top 10s. In every category, there is at least the top four vanilla categories and very, very formidable in GT Classic. But that's not all. Sephanomi. Sephi is also a titanic technical runner with very, very good times in many categories. These runners' PBs are only 24 seconds apart. As far as their, their SRL race PBs, Slaughter's 27 comes with a race PB of 34.25, but the slimmest of slim margin. Sephanomi coming in with a 34.49. 24 seconds. If you blink, you might miss him. But uh, our runners are nearly ready. And oh my goodness, the hype is palpable. The electricity is in the air. The situation is pregnant for an incredible race in this category gt classic is one of my favorite categories both to watch and view and commentate <laughs> yes watch and view my goodness i tell you what i'm not the best commentator for filling time for nothing i know how to take a sentence and make it even longer All right, I have dropped the gate. We're just waiting for them to start now. My goodness gracious. This is the big one, the big enchilada. This one's for almost all of the marbles, Chad. And they're off. All right, so this is Super Metroid coming to you live here on twitch.tv slash GT Classic. Here on May 2nd, 2022, as I said in the intro, this is the bottom bracket, I guess, semifinals. Winner will face Professor School in the bottom bracket finals for a spot in the grand finals. That uh, that top bracket matchup is going to be between Mr. Guy Average, who did beat Sloters, and Ruya. Maybe you've heard of Ruya. I believe Ruya is the current world record holder, but we got to get off series station first. In order to get off series station optimally, our runners are going to damage themselves down against this canned Ridley fight. Ridley is making his escape with the baby Metroid and kind of starting the entire game. And uh, you can tell from Sefi's timer that... Uh, He's having a great series here. It looks like uh, H01 door time 
uh, there to uh, to leave Ridley's room. Oh, Sloters taking a little bit of steam there on the stairs. Sefi though also taking steam. Sloters and Sefi into the tile room. No damage boost required. Oh, Sefi does take some damage. Does get hit by one of those tiles, but Sloters with a 45-59. And a 4586 from Sefi. My goodness. Incredible. Incredible series times. So for those of you that are new to Super Metroid Speedrunning, specifically the GT Classic category, this is a unique category. What's so special about this category, chat, is our runners are going to equip themselves with the absolute bare minimum required to execute a technique called the Lava Dive. Normally the game expects you to have the gravity suit when you enter the lower portion of Norfair, that is a superheated subterranean lava filled area of the game. But our runners are going to execute a movement technique called the Lava Dive using some precision wall jumps and eye frames, that's invincibility frames, in order to make it to lower Norfair without gravity suit. Once they're in Lower Norfolk, they're going to have to execute another special trick called the Green Gate Glitch. And that's going to give them access to the Golden Terezo or GT statue. And that is a mid-boss fight, mini-boss fight within Lower Norfair. And uh, they're going to input the GT code. They're going to hold all four face buttons when they enter GT's room from the backside. And once they do, they will get equipped with 700 energy a bunch of missiles, power bombs, and supers, and every movement item and beam under the sun. But first, they are going to travel down to Retro Brinstar. You saw them go through Old Tori in there. But now into Retro Brinstar, because they got to kickstart this game. They got to jumpstart. They got to apply those jumper cables to the positive and negative terminals of this game. Grabbing that morphing ball and the first missile pack in the entire game. Now, what makes GT Classic so special is you run with a bare, bare bones item loadout. You just have enough to do that lava dive. And there's many different ways to do it. You could do a two tank with high jump boots. You could do a three tank with high jump boots if you want to be really safe. There are even some runners that get no tanks. And some runners don't even get high jump boots to execute that lava dive. It's all about runner preference and comfort level. But uh, our runners have what they need, so they're traveling back to the surface of Criteria so they can journey down to Green Brinstar. Brinstar is lovely this time of year. So it, it, there won't be much difference uh, in this category until we get to Pink Brinstar. And we're still going to end up going to Crate because we got to get that Varia suit. Now, I've always said the climb is what separates the Neophyte Super Metroid runners from the experienced ones. You see Sloters 27 taking right side wall jumps to great effect, but Sefi not far behind, utilizing that so-called behemoth climb, utilizing ledge grabs, and uh, really nice climbs from both of these runners as they head to the first mini-boss of the game, up through this parlor section. That's going to be Bomb Terizo. They want to make sure that their shots are staggered in groups of five. They're little pea shooter shots. And they're going to be able to fan out BT's drops. BT kind of coughs up all these projectiles that then result in missile drops. And missiles are going to be the name of the game for maximum damage output here on Bomb Terizo. But they will want to do well to avoid the decapitation animation. In order to do that... They have to keep those keep those shots in multiples five. That was about a perfect fight from Sloters. Sefi, though, also with an excellent, excellent Bomb Terezo fight. Both runners avoiding the decapitation animation. I would expect nothing less from both of these. Not only are they incredibly skilled runners, but they are very true and loyal and wonderful, beloved friends of mine. So... I don't have a horse in this race. I'm just excited to be here supporting both Sefi and Sloters commentating this race. Down into Terminator is Sloters, followed right by Sefi, picking up that energy tank. Probably going to be grabbing the Kraid tank as well.
So you see Slaughter's blown away those green pirates. Same thing with Sefi. That is the name of the game. It looks just like any percent PRKD, but this is anything but. This is GT Classic, folks. So it looks like Slaughter's will be the first one down into green. Brinstar will proceed to accomplish the first sequence break of the game. That is the early Supers Mach Ball by jumping through the door and midair morphing oh so precisely. Both Sloters and Sephir are going to maintain their run speed in Morph Ball form right under the gates as Sloters to go grab those supers. Sephi through the door, about to morph. Look at that short hop from Sephi. That was sensational. And the D boost off the waiver. Let's freaking go. Oh my God. Last chat, I'm getting fired up. I'm on the edge of my seat. I can't even stand it. I hope you're enjoying this as much as I am. These runners are absolutely first class in their movement, in their dedication to learning and progressing this game. This is fantastic stuff as they're now entering Big Pink. At least Sloters is just a few seconds ahead of Sefi here. Now, normally in an any percent route, whether it's uh, original bus order, intended bus order, or PRKD, you would see them pick up the charge beam and those charge missiles, but not so. In GT Classic, like I said, this is about only picking up what you need to get to Lower Norfair, because once you reach GT's room, everything you could need will be available to you. Now, they do have to be careful because there is softlock potential at Crate. We've seen it in this tournament, unfortunately. I believe it was Nevdi in an absolutely heartbreaking fashion, uh, softlocked against Crate. No missiles and no supers. But before they do make their way to Crater, forgive me, chat, they do have to go all the way up the red tower, utilizing that hero shot technique. Beautiful, beautiful wall jumps from both runners. Fantastic movement through the hellway for Sloters. They got to get those, uh, those alpha PBs, the first PB pack of the game. Stick in the damage boost. Both of these runners look at Sloters just walking on air. And Sefi saying, Anything you can do, I can do just as well, if not better. Sefi is turning on the afterburners right now. He is about an item fanfare behind Sloters right now. And this is an incredibly volatile category, Chet. Anything can happen, even though it's a short category, even though both of these runners do have 34s. Oh, Sloters incredibly avoids falling into that uh, vile plume and i do believe sefi has taken a brief lead here or we are completely synced up back here into red tower i gotta say this is sensational stuff you're gonna hear that word a lot from me tonight you've already heard it at least twice look at the damage boosting off of that enemy whose name always for <laughs> name always betrays me i want to say can never someone in chat will tell me but my goodness this is incredible look at the movement look watch this watch this crates lair entry look no door bonk from either runner watch this entrance oh neither runner getting the optimal setup so we're still synced up oh Sloters with a bonk against the wall right in the door opening oh my gosh chat look at this are you watching? I don't know. Did you look away? Because you're going to miss something incredible from these two runners. Sloters with a really hard time in the party room. Give Sefi a couple seconds, maybe two, three seconds entering Mini Crade's room. Oh my goodness gracious me. It's anybody's game. Look at the damage boosting from Sefi. And now watch this Crade quick kill setup. Look at this. You lay the power bomb, you move yourself perfectly to the edge. And Sefi uh, decreasing the lag there, shooting some of those rocks, setting up for a missile quick, great quick kill. Same with, with, uh, with Sloters here. Look at the delivery, perfection from Sefanomi. Look at Sloters, perfection from Sloters. Textbook great quick kills from both runners. But Sefi first to grab that Varia suit. Half a fanfare, three and a half seconds separating these two runners.
This is just really special to see. Look at uh, uh, the double damage boost to leave Crane Slayer. Are you joking me right now? You've got to be kidding me. That movement is just too slick. It's too good. It's too good. I, I, I got to stop. No, just kidding. We're back. We're still commentating. We'll never stop. The hype train's going to keep on moving. And you see Sefi. Yeah, Sefi's going to be going with a two tank high jump boot. Uh, lava dive here. Same with Sloters. No crate tank for either runner. No crate tank. Oh my goodness me. So Sloters with a slight energy and ammo advantage here heading into business center of Upper Norfair. They're going to grab high jump boots and that energy tank. At least I think so. If they both skip it, I will be absolutely amazed. Oh, of course. Of course. Sefi grabbing the high jump takes Sloters right behind him doing the exact same thing. Oh my gosh. I don't think we're going to see any saves either. I would be really surprised if we saw a save at Bubble Mountain. I do think that Sloters saved against uh, Mr. Guy Average, and that allowed MGA to take and then keep a lead for the duration of their race. That's what sent Sloters to the bottom or backdoor bracket. Look at that from Sefi. That is such a clean... Both of these runners, Sloters with such a clean exit, using kind of a similar jump strategy, wall jump strategy as Alcatraz. My goodness. That is just terrific movement. They're really putting on a clinic. This is absolutely clinical and artistic movement. This is how you want a GT Classic race to be. So Sefi into Rising Tide. He was sticking on the top route, now into ball form, morphing underneath, but getting a little bit stuck here, allowing Sloters to take the lead at Bubble Mountain. I think both runners have to farm, only one super apiece. So that little bit of a miscue from Sefi allows Sloters to retake the lead, but it all depends on drop luck here at the uh, farm location. Ooh, Sloters with not such great luck. Oh, still not enough supers. Sefi's got what he needs. Sloters looking for full supers, and he has it. So now Sefi has retaken the lead. You know what? It is artisanal movement. Are you kidding me? These both are artisans of their craft. They are putting on a show for us here at twitch.tv slash GT Classic. Okay, now Sefi, first to enter the Gravitron gets a great bounce, great ball bounce off of there. Now watch the iframes. Watch, watch the move. Oh, Sefi takes a little tumble. He's, uh, he's got to push it. He's got to push it. Sloter's the first up. Sefi, yes! Sefi with 19 energy. Are you kidding me right now? Sefi down into lower Norfair. You've got to be joking. I am going to fall out of my chair right now. I am going to fall out of my chair. Why am I even using push to talk? I've just been holding down my push to talk key this entire time. Okay, we got through the lava dive, nearly unscathed. Now we have to get through the green gate. We have to get through the green gate. Show us the green, roll that beautiful green gate footage. Sefi looks like he's the first to enter there. Oh, oh Slaughter's with a first try. Sefi. Oh, Sefi gets it on the final super! <laughs> and Sloters executes the code, turns off Spazer. Sefi executes the code, turns off Spazer. This is incredible. What a race we have here. The GT code has entered. Our runners have exactly what they need. 700 energy, 100 missiles, 20 supers, 20 power bombs, every beam, every movement item. Look at the, oh, Sloters with the crash animation into the wall. If Sefi can get this charge. Oh, Sefi bonked the wall, bonked the door, I should say. Neither runner getting that spark. Neither runner getting that spark, but that's okay because they now have screw attack. If they had picked up screw attack before entering the GT code, they would have lost it and it would never be recovered. Fortunately, they didn't get it until they exited GT's uh, room here. Look at this. Both setting up for fast pillars. Both have... Oh, 
both have the shine spark charge. Seffi going high, Sloter's going low. Both of them through the, through the pillars room. And look at worst room in the game. Simply another room in the game to these runners with this item loadout. Absolutely crushing it right now into the amphitheater. Sloter's saving that space jump as well as Seffi hasn't dropped the space jump. This is really something. Sloter's into Red Key Hunter Shaft. Behind him. This is so close, so tense. I it's it's almost beyond words. My words are failing me, but chat, there's so much race left. We're coming up on the halfway point. And the beauty of this category is once that GT code is entered, it becomes a boss rush with some of the most unique and interesting movement you've ever seen. Double Kago from Sloters entering Metal Pirates. Sefi will go for double Kago. That's one. That's two Kagos for Sefi. Oh my goodness. OMG. Stop the presses. This is absolutely stunning. Look at the optimizations here with, oh, not so optimal from Sloters allows Sefi to enter Flower House before he does. Oh my goodness, he's just going balls to the wall. Forgive my language for those, for those of you in chat who don't like vulgarity. Well, this display from both of these runners is positively vulgar. 20 shots is what it's going to take against Ridley. 1,800 HP, 900 damage per charge shot with that full beam combination. Full beam combination. Oh my goodness. Seffi with the lead right now. Sloters hanging on. Sloters hanging around. The thing about Sloters is when Sloters smells blood, he's like a shark circling in the water. He absolutely gives no quarter and none is expected from a runner of his caliber, but Seffi is the first to defeat Ridley. Sloters being picked up at 1808. Seffi's already on the escape. So that's two out of four G4 bosses down. And I've got a surprise for you, Chad. The last three bosses, including mini boss uh, Botwoon in Meridia, all of these enemies are going to be micro. Oh, gosh, that Metal Pirate's exit from Sefi. All of these future bosses that I'm talking about are going to be microwavable. The microwave beam is a technique utilizing the X-ray scope. But what do you mean, hockey? They don't have the icon. Oh, Almost gets the Keku Man show you special is Sefi. How about Sloters? Can he get the short charge? Oh, taking some damage off of that Diskiga doesn't get the Keku special. But back to Microwave Beam. Our runners have Grapple Beam. Our runners have X-Ray Scope. It's there. You just can't see it. Using the uh, armor piercing capability of Plaza Beam, they're going to be able to deliver damage a lot like in the original Mega Man game for the NES, the old, uh, the old Start Select Trick, or whatever the heck it's called. But Sefi is absolutely stunning right now. You have to remember, Chet, the winner of this race progresses to the bottom bracket finals to face Professor School. The loser of this race is out of the tournament. Out of the tournament. This is for all the marbles right now to, to stay alive. Chat giving me the in intel based on the restream that there are four seconds between these runners. Now, Meridia is the next section on the docket, and it is absolutely technically demanding. But with this item loadout, it shouldn't be any sweat for these runners. Oh my gosh, synced up the door transitions, but Sloters is about two rooms behind here. Sefi already into the frogway, about to enter business center. Sloters has really got to pick up the pace here. And both of these runners have had absolutely stunning victories so far, executing all the major tricks and challenges. I absolutely can't believe this race so far. So you saw earlier when our runners were headed to Crade, they did pop the Meridia tube with a power bomb. So now with that space jump, they should be able to just catapult themselves up into Main Street. Look at the movement from Sefi. That was such an optimal entrance. And then just spam that jump button as they head into Fishbowl. Look at the same thing from Sloters. Very nice movement. 
So Slaughter's into Fishbowl, but Sefi's already ready to scale Mount Everest. He's going to be utilizing that space jump. His energy is two tanks lower than Slaughter's. Will Slaughter's use a short charge here? Yes, he will. Crash animation be damned. That's going to gain him some time on Sefi here as both runners enter Aqueduct. But Sefi will be the first to make it to the pipe maze. And he we will be showing off that illustrious, illustrious microwave beam. Yeah, this is an absolutely tight race, but set with the advantage to Sefi right now. Now just look at that. Look at the damage being dealt in a single super delivered to Botwoon's stupid looking face. Unbelievable. Slaughter's with a bit more optimal going with the uh doesn't have to burn a super there. So now Sefi setting up for full half. He wants to cross the Coliseum with a spark here. Push it, push it, push it. Frames away from losing it. And he's got it. Sefi's got full happy across the col across the Coliseum. Oh, misses the super. Slaughters as well with full happy. Oh my goodness. Could this come down to reverse happy? Could this come down to Torian? Could this come down to anything? I absolutely can't believe this. This is so good. This is absolute theater. Now we're gonna see some more microwave potential. And the nicest thing about the fight against Dragon is that if you crouch while doing the microwave beam, when Dragon is dead, Samus will automatically stand up, letting you know when you should stop X-ray scoping. Look at that. Look at the vertical delivery from Sefi right to Dragon's belly, trying to set up for a spikes. Oh, interesting. It looks like Sefi not going for the spike suit here. That might give Sloters the advantage if he can pull it out. Oh, no spike suit for Sloters either. It's going to come down to pure movement as well as Torian. No Womple jump for Sefi, but I would never hold it against him. I have way too much respect for him, but I do love a good Womple jump. Sloters, though, with the Womple jump. That is optimal when you don't get the blue suit or spike suit. So that's going to gain him a tiny bit of time on Sefi. But Sefi holding on to this lead here. Holding on to a tenuous lead. Just one room separating these runners. You saw... You saw... Oh my goodness. I don't even know what to say. I got to collect myself. Oh gosh, that spicy entrance from Sloters. I don't believe it. Oh, this movement is just disgustingly good. It's so good. I can't believe it sometimes, but you know what? Pinch me, I must be dreaming. My gosh. Now we'll see if, uh, we'll see if Sefi can get the old foosball special here. Back into Red Tower. A little bit better entrance into that door from, uh... But, uh, maybe didn't need it, but look at this. We want to see some spring ball strats here. Look at the run up. Oh, just bonks a tiny bit from Sefi. How about Sloters? Oh, not quite either. No foosballs today. But we do have. Oh, I can't believe how close this race is. We do have one more G4 boss. Don't forget about the ghost with the most reset any percent attempts in this game. That is Fantoon. Oh, I just, I, I love the movement too, exiting the wrecked ship, but entering the wrecked ship is incredible too. These runners are just doing so well to maintain Samus's momentum in space. But it, it could come down to, uh, to Fantoon Pattern. Well, you know what I always say, chat, the spice must flow. And if these runners walk without rhythm, they won't attract the worm, but they are walking and running and jumping and wall jumping with a rhythm, the likes of which have never been seen before. Clean entrances into Fantoon. You've got both of those speed balls. Oh my gosh, I can't believe this. Sefi got a medium, correct me if I'm wrong, Chad, but gets off 
I think Sloter's also got a medium. Both with textbook microwaves on Fantoon. This is such a close kill. Look at the door. Well, give me the door time, Chad. Give me the door. 26-18 for Sefi. 26-22 for Sloters. That's four seconds. Four seconds, Chad. As we're heading to Torian. Now watch this movement. Don't even... Peel your eyes open with your fingers. Do not even blink or you'll miss it. This movement exiting the wrecked ship is absolutely phenomenal. Look at the space jump. Look at the space boost from Sefi. Oh, loses it on a platform midway. If Sloters can maintain that all the way, he might take the lead. Oh my God, the doors, the doors. I don't, I don't believe this right now. Oh my God. Oh my goodness. The space boost from Sloters across and the, sp the, the spring ball jump over the moat, the sink. Oh my God, they're, they're, every runner, every runner in the audience, they're throwing in the kitchen sink right now. Look at these parlors from these runners plowing through that wall. Into Terminator. Look at the movement, look at the speed ball. Oh, just mowing through those pirates. Chad, give me the G4 door times. Oh, Sefi got a little bit of a stumble there. Sloters is, I think, going to be the first into G4. 27.45 for Sloter. 27.48 for Sefi. Oh, my goodness gracious. This is, I've never seen anything like this. It's going to give me a chance to breathe and reflect on if we've really come on a journey here, Chad. But it's all going to come down to Torian. Torian is one of the most technically demanding sections of this game, maybe the most, to do the four Metroid rooms optimally and get the baby skip and get the spring ball Zeb skip. Oh, Chad. This has been a real treat. It's been a treat to watch. It's been a treat to commentate. Brace yourselves because some optimal movement is coming. So Sloters is going to be the first into Metroid Room 1. Sefi right behind him. A good start from Sloters. Just, I love that uppercut, that just little, just little, you know... Tiger uppercut. Look at the Metroid Room 2. Look at the Metroid Room 2 from Sloters. He's already through. Sefi with the grouping strategy. Oh, a really spicy uh, Metroid Room 3, but ground to a halt from Sloters. Sefi unfortunately missing that first Metroid. Gonna take him out anyway with a fusillade of supers. And Sloters with fantastic Metroid Rooms is now gonna be setting up for Baby Skip. Sefi, though, right behind him, just has to get past the iron side hoppers. Baby Skip will decide this. Baby Skip and an optimal stand-up will decide this. All right, Sloter's on the Baby Skip attempt. He's got the jump rope. He's clearing away the moss. He's one jump away. He's through the door. Sefi on the jump. sefi has got the jump rope. He's cleared away the moss. No, 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 no. Sefi gets grabbed. No. Sefi gets grabbed by the baby Metroid. Oh. He's going to have to refill his energy or perhaps go with the riskier strat, which is to crystal flash. Oh my goodness, that was so close. Sloters into Metroid, or I should say Mother Brain 1 with a perfect spring ball Zeb skip. Delivering those supers right to Mother Brain's frontal cortex. Frontal lobe, I should say. Part of the cerebral cortex. Open up an anatomy book, hockey, it won't hurt you. 
But Sefi, having recharged his energy, is now gonna head down and execute that Spring Ball Zeb skip. But Sloters, 20 shots, 18,000 HP here on Mother Brain 2. Oh, Sefi going with the standard, standard Ice Zeb skip. Doesn't quite get it on the first attempt. He's gotta take damage before that Rinka unfreezes. Beautiful backup. Beautiful second attempt from Sefi. Beautiful second attempt. He's now into Mother Brain 1. Gonna shatter that glass, deliver the ordinance, deliver the external delivery of those supers. Un. Brain fight very, very soon. And my internet, my ISP is saying, Hockey, you're having too much fun. The grace is too good. We have to buffer the streams. Well, as long as you buffer the streams and don't cross them, you know what I mean? It looks like Sloters is already through Mother Brain 2. He's going to be setting up for Sand Up Glitch. Sloters in the cutscene. Sefi on Mother Brain 2 delivering those charge shots into the catch up phase. I believe that's 14 shots. Oh, misses one of those shots, but he's got the damage. He's got it done. Somehow got Charge Beam off, but Charge Beam's back on. We're, we're in business here. We can work with this. So now Sloters with the stand-up glitch, able to damage Mother Brain 3 during this cutscene where the baby Metroid comes to Samus's aid. I see Sefi using that spring ball, trying to get into that rhythm, keep jumping, keep spamming up so that Samus does not lay down. Sloters continuing to deliver damage. I have to say, chat, this has been one of the most exciting races of GT Classic I've ever commentated. Probably the most exciting. From start to finish, just two titans, two heavyweight champions exchanging body blows. And it all came down to Tori, and it all came down to Baby Skip. So Slaughter's with a three shot, maybe a four shot Mother Brain 3. Not the most optimal stand up, but it'll get the job done. Sefi, though, continuing to pound Mother Brain 3 with those charge shots, utilizing that full beam combination. But Sloters is going to be on the escape, barring any catastrophe. This is Sloters' race to lose. We'll see if he goes for Blue Bomber. He does not have a lot of time to waste uh, with Blue Bomber attempts. Might just go with the standard spark and then eat the crash animation. Oh my goodness, he's going for it. And he gets it first try. you got to be kidding me, Sloters. That is just disgusting. Sefi with a very optimal Mother Brain 3. I believe that was one or two shots, but Sloter's already into the Leodox room. Of note, I've waited this long to say it, neither runner utilizing Moonfall. Absolutely remarkable that they can post such incredible times without the aid of Moonfall. A behemoth spark from Sloter's as he goes up the reverse fall, AKA the climb. Sefi on the escape. We'll see if we get a blue bomber from Sefi, but Sloters is into the parlor, avoiding the steam, getting to the landing site. Looks like Sefi's setting up for it. Gonna go with the spark strat. It's tried and true. And Sloters has done it. Sloters finishes with an official SRL time of 34.45. And I do have on good information that that was a gold split. Torian. Fantastic. GG's to Sloters. Sloters will be advancing to face Professor School in the bottom bracket finals. Oh, Sefi. Going to have to roll, roll it back. Roll back the footage. A second attempt. Behemoth Spark. Let's freaking go into parlor. My goodness gracious. Unbelievable stuff. Just a couple of wall jumps away, all the way to the landing site. A big leap of faith and hits down and Sefi finishes in second place with an official SRL time of 35-38. GG's to both runners on an absolutely spellbinding, miraculous, 
so full of life was this race. Fantastic stuff. Yeah, retweet it. Put it on MySpace. Put it on 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 whatever. Buzzfeed. I don't even know. Just do blow out the social media. Do it up big. I want you to signal boost this race. Everybody should watch this VOD. My goodness. All right, I'm going to take a deep breath, but we are joined by tonight's runner-up, Sefi Nomi. GG, Sefi, what an incredible race. Thank you, Hockey. What's up? Uh, big shout-outs to Sloters, of course. Obviously, well merited that win. Oh, my gosh. I... um. That that was wild. Uh, my hands are cold. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I've been rendered nearly speechless, Sefi. You know that doesn't happen often to me. But we are joined by today's victorious winner. <laughs> it's not redundant or anything. We are joined by Sloters Twenty Seven. GGs, Sloters, and thank you for an incredible race. Yo, GGs, and that's not a good game. That is a great game, Sefi. GGs. <laughs> I feel, oh gosh, I was clutching it. Like, I don't know if I'm allowed to say butthole, but like diamond clenching was like <laughs> happening this entire run. GG, dude. Like seriously. Uh, oh my gosh. This is, um, I still have like that thrill, that fucking excitement. Ah, oh, it's like so good. Um, how, how do you feel about your run though? You know, there was, uh, I had a pretty bad lower Norfair, but the rest of it was pretty good. I don't know how you felt about yours, but I mean, it all worked out. I guess we were pretty neck and neck for most of it. Hockey, what do you think? I mean, it was a thrill, an opportunity, a treat, a privilege, an honor, a fulfillment to commentate this race. It was from start to finish, absolutely sensational. It was blink and you miss it. It was don't touch that dial. It was keep your eyes glued to the monitor. What are they gonna do next? Who's gonna take the lead? Who's gonna for you know who's gonna give up the lead? Sefi, you were so clutch. A uh, two tank with boots lava dive to have to do it and do it over. You guys both entered Lower Norfair almost simultaneously and then clutching out the green gate glitch on your fifth and final Super Sefi and just keeping pace, keeping pace, keep pace, then taking the lead, taking the lead, taking the lead, back and forth. Oh, sublime. A single word for this race, <laughs> sublime. Uh, Slaughter is definitely brings out the best in me, but apparently also brings out the worst in me. Because that was actually I I was I was surprised about like how that lava dive went and the GGG. Um yeah. When I was at that last one, I was I was like accepting of my fate. I was like, yep, I I let my partner down. But that wasn't the case. I don't know. It's always fun though, racing slaughters. Like out of the few like casual races that we used to have. Way back, you know, from Wednesdays are blind to like our any percent. Um, I think it was multi category race. That might have been the last race that we had. Yeah, definitely in the way back machine. Uh, wait, are we talking 2020 edition or the 2018 multi cat? Oh, 2018. That was 2018, yeah. yeah. These, these two runners, Chad, I mean, everyone knows them, knows them by name. And knows that they have just tremendous respect for each other. And just, if you want to talk about raising the bar on competitive level, go, both of you go back and watch this VOD. Maybe turn the volume down to like <laughs> 1%, maybe 2% tops. But go back and watch this because it was phenomenal. Um, <laughs> gosh, thank you, Hockey, for. For comms, I'm pretty sure I have to. When you say watch it at like one volume, that means you have to turn it up and crank it up to like a thou. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm just glad my voice lasted this long. It it's was really that nutty, like gosh. 
I just I couldn't believe it. It was like it was like every time, every time Sloters gave up some ground and you capitalized, then he came storming back. Or every time Sloters gave up, you know, and then Seth, you just came storming back. Like I don't, I lost count of the lead changes. Bro, only Sloters. I knew I should have stream sniped you. I knew it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> can't steal my tech. <laughs> can it's hard. I can't perfect it. And the just, way that he is. No race safeties, no saves. Like it, it, the it was so set up to have something catastrophically bad happen. But of course, because you two are so skilled and so, I would say, comfortable in a race setting to just elevate and just be that little bit extra for a race setting to execute all the really hard stuff so so beautifully. And it was it was just it was a treat. It was an absolute treat to watch and commentate. Thank you so much, Hockey. Again, uh, follow Sloters, everyone, as you know. He's like a favorite to take all of this. And yeah, don't ever sleep on Sloters, obviously. He, and like, I know Morgana would, but <laughs> but not anyone else. No, I think, I think, Seth, I think Morgana would be telling Sloters to go the F to sleep. <laughs> I think Probably. that's what it would be. Yeah. Uh, I don't have you, have you ever seen that video, Sefi? I know this is, you know, not really like a post match uh, commentator question, but have you ever seen that video of uh, <laughs> Morgana's voice actor le reading the book, Go the F to Sleep? No, I need to check that out. Do I just I, look that up? <laughs> I will DM it to you, I promise. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> worth the watch. Uh, worth the watch. But you know what else is worth the watch, chat? Stop what you're doing and start this VOD over and watch it again. Watch it again because it was just. It was just that good. Oh, thank you guys so much for giving us such a fantastic race. Um, there's still a lot of tournament left. We do have, uh, I don't think that Ruya MGA is on the schedule yet, but now Sloters will be facing Professor School. What do you think, Sloters? I think the student's going to become the master hockey. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. You heard it here first, Chad. Sloters 27 promising to take Professor School to school <laughs> i can't believe it i don't know if i can take him there because i guess he's already there but i'm showing up either way <laughs> for sure for sure well Sefi, thank you for an absolutely wonderful tournament you had some incredible races uh any any final thoughts anything on your mind Bro, finally someone put me into retirement. <laughs> someone oh. had to take it. Had to be, it had to be one of us. <laughs> yeah, honestly. I mean, I, I wasn't going to do it myself. So thank you, Floaters, for, for all that. And thank you, Hockey, again. And uh, Restreamer, Firebat, I yeah, appreciate I'd it. Be. Yeah. Good luck on uh, the rest of your matches, Sloters. Um You have no choice but to win all. Thank you. I just for you, partner. I'm gonna do it. Hands up. <laughs> you heard it here first. Sloter's prediction for the rest of the tournament. Win spelled S L O A T. That's how we're gonna spell spell winner. <laughs> Sloters, any closing remarks? Yeah, I just wanna say again, I'm super honored to get to race against Sefi. He's one of my favorite runners across the whole community. He's been a huge inspiration to me ever since I started playing. And still, after years of playing this game, me and him being able to have races like this, it's honestly incredible, man. I, I love it every opportunity we get. And it's not every day I get to make him lose. The last time I forced him to lose was, I believe, season three of Randall League. Here we go. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll probably you know have some more for season four but i guess we'll see when the time comes but no seriously i'm super honored to race with you Sefi. i'm looking forward to to more in the future between us without a doubt oh gosh i'm tearing up the best slotus favorite favorite runner right here i don't know i think everyone should aspire to be slotus um but yeah Thank you, dude. That's that's much too kind. You got this. Well, chat, it's been a wonderful experience. I hope we have filled your day. 
and your evening with excitement and hype and energy. And uh, yeah, like I said, plenty more tournament left. But uh, this has been the Hockey Towner GT Classic bottom bracket semis between Sloters 27 and Sefanomi. And on behalf of all the tournament organizers and Restreamer and Sane Firebat, I'd like to wish you all a wonderful night and a better tomorrow. <laughs>